Hi again everyone, how is all doing? Right, so a chap called Jason got in touch with me. Um, not the same Jason that gave me the Class 66 and all the hoppers recently. Um, this is another Jason. Uh, and he asked if I would like to have a Horby DCC Select Controller that he had spare. Um, now, I said yes please, because one, it'll be helpful uh, to be able to test a, DC a DCC fitted locomotive if it comes my way, which one did recently. And two, you know, I thought it would be uh, interesting and informative for me to, to have a fiddle with DCC, just so I could see how it works and whatnot. So here is the controller. Uh, thank you very, very much to Jason for sending me this. Um, he also sent me a few other goodies along with it, so uh, thanks for those as well. Um, what I'm going to do is connect this up to my bit of test track, and the only locomotive I currently have that's got a decoder is mod here. Um, so I'll open it up, remove the blanking plate, and, and plug in the, the decoder and see what happens. Uh, mod also has uh, sound fitted, so f we'll see if we can make it make some noise. Um, I've downloaded and printed off the instructions for the controller because I have not got a clue. And I've also dug out the, uh, the documentation for the, the DCC sound that came with mod. Um, and looking at it, crikey. So, first of all, We'll uh, open up the tender on mod and we'll pull out the blanking plate and plug in the decoder. I must stress I have absolutely no intention of converting to DCC, so don't, uh, don't worry. <laughs> um, there's just no way I am converting all my locomotives to DCC and I've wired up my new layout for DC, not DCC, so, you know, it's just not happening. Um, but I would like to have the ability to run a DCC locomotive. Um, now, I'm kind of thinking of configuring the end-to-end the -end route on my layout to, to be able to run DCC, but, um, you know, there is problems with that. Uh, a few people have pointed it out, and I'm well aware of it. Um, you do not want DC and DCC mixing. Um, so, you know, I would need to isolate the part of the layout that's on DCC, and that part of the layout is also wired up from a shuttle. So it all gets very complicated. It's not impossible. Um, I'd need to do some very clever switching and isolating. Um, but I think what's probably more likely is I just won't have the controller plugged in until I come to use it and I'll unplug everything else. Um, so I don't think I'm going to go down the route of having a permanently wired DCC route on the layout. Right, okay, so there is the decoder. There's, there's the speaker, which you can see there underneath. Um, and there's the plug and there's the blanking plate. So we'll need to remove the blanking plate very carefully. Like that. Note of exactly which way around it goes. I think pin number one is that one there. Just noticing the pins are a wee bit bent on that, so it's been uh, kind of yanked out, I think. Right, okay, plug that in. Uh, I guess we'll put the tender top back on. See if that will make a difference to the sound, I would imagine if I can get the sound working. Right, okay, so mod is ready to go under DCC. So I've just fed a couple of wires and crocodile clips to this just to connect it up to my test track just now. All right, power on the controller. Okay, it defaults to zero three. Now, let's read the instructions here. Quick start, place a new locomotive on the track a new locomotive will have, to, will have the default address 03 because it's never been programmed with any other address. Uh, now, this isn't brand new. It's new to me, but it wasn't really brand new. So how do I know if it's uh, been given a different address? I guess we just have to assume it's 3. Uh, once the select is powered up, 3 will automatically be shown on the LCD, which it is. Turn the control knob on the select clockwise until the locomotive has reached the desired speed. Right, hang on. Let's push it back. 
back a wee bit. Right, turn the control knob. Nothing happens. Oh no, there she goes. Very, very slow start. And very slow stop. Go the other direction. Mm. Really, really slow to start. I guess that's uh, programmable. I think I saw something in here. Um, what did it say? Locomotive acceleration and deceleration. Blah, 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 blah. All BCC decoders have programmable acceleration and deceleration rates. This allows a more realistic or lifelike control of the locomotive other than the usual instant stop and start of DC control systems. Um, the select can separately program both a decoder's acceleration and deceleration rates with any value between 1 and 99. The larger the number, the longer the loco will take to reach the speed set by the select throttle. Uh, with the locomotive on the track, press the select. Oh, right, okay, we're getting ahead of myself. So the fact that this works suggests that the locomotive is set for uh, 03. I mean, that is impressive, I have to say, you know, it's just a really slow pull away and nice slow smooth stop. I do like that. Yeah, I have to say, that is very impressive, but, you know, um, the J36 is a particularly good model. Uh, I'm quite sure if uh, Haig was fitted with a decoder, it would be just as good, but I'm quite sure some of my other locomotives wouldn't perform that well, but uh, yeah. I really do like that. Uh, right, okay. Adding locals and programming. If you want to add a further DCC locomotive, you'll need to program their DCC decoders with a, with a unique address. Um, so if I want to change this from the default number three, why is it number three? Seems a bit weird. To change the code from number three to another address, follow the steps below. Okay, well, let's just run through this. Place the locomotive you want to program on the track. Press and hold the select button for two seconds. One, two. Uh, the display will flash LA, locomotive address. Press button one on the unit keypad. It flashes. No, it's not, it says it flashes zero one. It's not, it's just flashing one. Then press select again to program the locomotive with address one. It didn't actually give me a fright. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that noise was. I think it was supposed to be a whistle. It sounded a bit garbled. Um, the red LED will flash up to seven times. Yeah, I did see it flashing. Uh, so I'm assuming the fact that it made that noise is now number one. It's showing zero one. Yep, yeah, there we go. So I've made a locomotive go under DCC and I've reprogrammed one with a different uh, a different number. Uh, acceleration and deceleration, uh, do you know, I'm not going to mess around with that. There's one thing I don't like here, and that's I don't know, you know, if you buy a brand new locomotive, I guess everything's set to default. But if you buy a, a used one, you know, doing what someone else has programmed into the decoder, and it doesn't display anything on, on here. Um, maybe other controllers do tell you what uh, has been programmed in. I don't know. Um, so I think we're going to skip that. Okay, so we're running multiple locomotives. Uh, press one on the keypad. Turn it on, be able to move. Press two. So, okay, so I've had three locomotives, each assigned numbers one, two, and three. You press number one um, and you turn the control knob. You then press number two to make the other one go. 
Okay, so every time you want to control a locomotive, you have to press the corresponding number. Right, okay, well, I don't have multiple locomotives, so there's no point in messing around with that. Analog locomotive control. The Select is capable of controlling a standard DC analog locomotive, i.e. a locomotive that is not fitted with a DCC decoder. Uh, however, this practice is not recommended. <laughs> right, we'll just not do it then. Um, right, locomotive function control. This is what I want to know. The Select is capable of remotely switching on and off up to 29 functions. Some decoder functions may activate for a short period of time and then switch off. This may be the case with a whistle on a sound decoder. These types of functions require mom momentary switching where the function is turned on and then off again after a short duration. Uh, right, okay. Turning on and off lights. Don't have lights, so here we go. This should be it here. Turning on off decoder functions F0 to F28. So, with the desired local address displayed on screen, simply enter the function number you wish to control. I don't know what the numbers are. I guess I'll have to look up this. Um, and then press the function button and the function will turn on or off depending on its current state. Right, okay. So, blimey. There you go. Function one is background steam, the cylinder cock, steam exhaust and coasting. Right, okay, so what's that I do again? Mm -hmm. Let's enter the function number one and then press the function button. Ooh. Okay. What happens if we make a move? Jeez, that's loud. <laughs> it's very loud. I'm guessing you can change the volume. Um, it's also very shrill. It sounds like a, you know, the horrible noises that some kids' toys make. It's really, uh, you know, there's a horrible frequency in there that really grates my ears. Let's go the other direction. Jeez. Right. Function two. Okay, why isn't that changing? Hmm. Function two. There's a long whistle. Function three is three short bursts of the whistle. Try that again. Okay, uh, function four, the short burst. The buttons in this thing are awful. Let's see that. There we go. Right, that was worth it. Uh, function six, wheel slip. Okay. Function seven, coal shoveling. <laughs> okay. Shut up. 
Hey, shut up now, that's plenty. How do you make it shut up? Peace and quiet. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, this sounds a bit of fun, but personally, I find it horrible. <laughs> I find it really goes to my ears. I've got very sensitive hearing. I've actually got quite bad tinnitus, um, and it doesn't take much to set it off. And really high-pitched, shrill sounds like that, I couldn't listen to that for any length of time. I dare say different models sound a bit different. You know, the speaker in there is, is a fair size, but it's still a very, very cheap, nasty sounding speaker. So there we are, I've scratched the surface of DCC. You know, there's a whole load of stuff um, I would need to learn if I wanted to get into DCC. Um, but I have to say, looking at everything in here, looking at all the CV settings and some of the stuff you would have to get your head around. And, you know, I'm, I like to think I'm quite a tech savvy guy. You know, I build my own computers and stuff. I'm not. Uh, a Luddite by any means, but um, pff, some of this is just gobbledygook. But I guess I would figure it all out if I sat and worked through it all. CV154, default value is 115, value range of 0 to 255, um, and it's 12 comma parameter of motor algorithm 2. <laughs> just, what? Uh, I mean, it's a whole other thing, isn't it? It's a whole other thing. As, I mean, I've said before, I am not against DCC at all. I'm in favour of any aspect of anything in the hobby that uh, brings something to the hobby or, you know, brings some new uh, dynamic to it or whatever. So I'm, I'm totally for DCC, don't get me wrong. But I just personally prefer just to stick with DC and watch my trains run. Um, uh, <laughs> that sound is awful. Right, what I'm going to do is connect this up to the end-to-end -end line on the layout and we'll run mod back and forward. We'll put the sound on so we can hear it chuffing away at full speed. Um, I'll maybe put some cotton wool in my ears or something. Right, let's go to the layout room. Okay, so I've connected up the controller to a power input in there um, and that will provide power right along my end-to-end. -end. Um, I do have isolated sections in the end-to-end -end now for the shuttle, so I'll need to keep the uh, the locomotive short of those. I've also got my controller here switched off and all the feeds to the track um, go through these switches, so I'll switch them off. So there's no, uh, no danger of any power getting fed back to the controller from the DCC controller. Um, similarly with the shuttle, um, all the wires that lead to the track go through switches so I can switch them all off. So the shuttle and this controller um, with or without power are not connected to the track. So the only thing that's connected is the DCC controller. Okay so we're set to zero one. We'll switch the sound on. And then we're ready to go. Bring it back.
Right, so there we are, I've had a wee dabble into DCC. Um, there's no doubt the acceleration and deceleration is really nice. The sound is something that just doesn't float my boat at all. Um, I dare say some people absolutely love it. And uh, for exhibitions and stuff, I kind of get it. But uh, it's not for me, it's just uh, far too shrill for my ears. And uh, without smoke and steam belching out the locomotive, it, uh, it just seems a bit odd to me. Um, I prefer my imagination. So thanks very, very much again to Jason for sending me this. Um, I don't think I'm going to wire this in permanently to the layout. Um, I think it'll get set up uh, as and when it's required. Uh, you know, I've just got enough to be getting on with without messing around with DCC too much. Um, so I think we'll just leave it unplugged and leave my layout 100% DC. Uh, next video will be back to DC business as usual and uh, it'll be a repair request and I'll need to do a wee update video to demonstrate the shuttle working uh, pretty soon. Okay folks, we'll catch you later.